York is a typical Creole village that lies about 20 miles away from Sierra Leone's capital, Freetown. The village is a Christian dominated, one that has existed for over two centuries. York origin is unclear, but historical accounts suggest that York is named after the Dukies of York who stayed in the community at some point. Others say the name York is derived from a Shabu word that means to carry people as slaves during the era of the slave trade. My name is James Tambamatha. I'm a student of the Lixal Business College studying mass communication. Every year, the Department of Mass Communication organizes an excursion trip for students to explore and learn new experience. This year, York Village is the choosing destination. For some of us, it is the first time visiting the village, having read about it in books and heard about it from stories being told. with lots of speculations from those that have never visited such place, asking questions to our senior lecturer, Ibrahim Suri Bangura, who showed us beautiful places on the highway as we proceed our journey. We have actually arrived at Kent, Junction and at the back here you can see Kent Junction Police Station. Um, here there's a checkpoint actually. There's a checkpoint actually. And on this highway you can see uh, this road is actually leading to York, Guma, Juba, and all the way inside Freetown. We have arrived. Entering the village, we are welcomed by ancient houses built by early settlers, the Creoles, and former Europeans. Today, York is home to different kinds of people involved in different trades fishermen, farmers, and entrepreneurs. Among the most fascinating things you will see in a village is the town bell, which is at the center of the village, and closer to it, is the second centenary which was built by the people. The town bell is used as a form of communication, sounding the alarm when there is an emergency, the likes of which you hardly see in the country today due to the advent of technology. If them residents can one one they ring away and say one it's just they ring back one thing. So they know say na meeting, meeting they on. But if any problem happen at the tongue, they ring fast fast. All man for commerce. They like it they any side. As you hear the bell fast as you say, oh problem they happen. So they come up for can check what thing happen. I know some of them have telephones, but that bell has been there since time before memorial and that bell is a story in new york village they cannot just cut it off like that that means a big history has just been erased from new york village I, I i was watching that bell you know for quite some time and i think back then i think there were there were no means of uh, these mobile phones as a means of information and communication so only they use that bell you understand? So because of that bell, that bell passed on the information to, to the community people. We once learned as a communication student that during, before the, te um, before the print media and all of that, people used to communicate to bells, to s the sign of smoke and all of that. We know the purpose of the bell is to call people to attention during emergencies and other prominent issues. But I am speculating, there is something beyond this that I want to know. What led to the idea of using bell in York Village? A question I asked the village headman, Julevic. Because the community at large, at that particular time, the side where you see the forest desu, now the community will start. 
Now that the people in India, but during the internet day, now grass house them, now they get. And most of the people and the men there have been fishermen them. So, because of the distance, the beach and the place, fire incidents been take place. So when the fire incident take place, now the tongue, people them now the fish, the fish woman they now be don't go down. Better people not been there. And since the grass house, you host them all being there for born. Without nobody no know. Later on they find out say this to happen. So what in and do now, that being all the people now say for let them get something, we go the alarm when incident happen, then go able for alarm the people for come together so that they go come in the rescue. So now one of the purpose that they be make then donate that bell. Few years ago, Julik became the village head of York Village and celebrated the community's 200 years of existence in 2019. Yeah, 14 days, you know, you know the time where we celebrated 200 years, that the things then where we suppose as a district headquarter town for don't showcase to people for let them know say this not yes, this is headquarter town and not been there at all at all. We lack so many developments then within the community where we no get, you know. In fact, the district um, office been there now, the council office been there now, but no longer they don't move them, they don't care and go Waterloo. When people they want access council pass, they go all the way Waterloo. We are heading to York Island to see the incredible work done by early settlers. It is around five to seven minute boat ride from the mainland. For many of us, it is the first time to onboard a local boat of this maid. The experience was great. I was playing because I've never crossed a, a sea or water like this ever in my life before. A great shock and fear. I even cried as you can see my mood. For some of us, this is our first time to be here. My own experience, I thank God because the moment I stepped my feet into the boat, it was like something else. You can see the reaction from some of my colleagues when we are crossing by. Some we are praying, some, some cannot even take a snapshot because of the fright. But I was competent at the same time because I, I, I did not show off that, that anxiety in me. I just put it like a bit of calm, you know, since a lot of my friends were there, so I was coping up. We have arrived at um, the island where a whole lot of um, historical facts are going to be shown to us as a um, student and our zest to learn is really, really great here. The monumental architecture done by the early settlers can be traced in the way the stones used were laid and shaped to build the settlement. <laughs> so we've made it this far. We are talking. This place where we are standing is said to be um, where um, the people before us were staying. As you can see, it's built around me with bricks perfectly like there are people staying here as you can see it's been caved like houses there are so many stones that we are built perfectly as if people were living here walking around the island you will discover strange pits or holes that might have been dug by early settlers you might want to see this giant tree which is considered the oldest tallest and biggest tree on the island at this point, returning to the mainland of York Village, our next site of visit is the Fori Water Cave, located a few kilometers away from the town bell. It is said that the white slave traders used to fetch fresh water from this cave for their journey across the Atlantic Ocean. The people of York still use the water for drinking and domestic purposes. But unfortunately for us, we could not see any running water here. 
From observations, there seemed to be an empty path where the water runs from the cave to the ocean, which may have dried because of the dry seasons. For we mamas alone. And that's the music, baby. <laughs> For we mamas alone. Few weeks after the trip, I returned to York Village to explore on other areas and historical sites. Arriving for the second time, I met Magnus Pierce, whom I was directed to by a friend in Freetown. Magnus told me he is the town crier of York community. This made me believe and felt confident that he is familiar to almost every corner of York, especially historical sites. York is faced with numerous challenges. You will be surprised that with all international recognition and relics the community holds, the issue of pure drinking water remains a major constraint the community encounters. We lack so many developments then within the community where we no get. It don't take again where they try to approve the water system for we. Um, water resources, Guma, so they appeal to government, they are water and alive. Make them come and give a support to this community. I believe say, this community itself can put Salon back in the map. Some of the functioning colonial water wells within the community are not pure for drinking purposes. Some are now used for dumping rubbish, and some host endangered species which are threats to people living in the village. The health of the people, according to the chief, is under threat as their medical facility lacks medical equipment and medicines. The health center, I say that now one of the key areas where I really want for let government put attention. Because when you look right around the peninsula, the one whole country will just have open corners and cottage. Whereby we get potential areas that we can able for develop where go ease them problem and then our freedom. Tourism is a tool for peace in any country as it helps promote tolerance between people as they learn and better understand cultures of different people. You know, let them not just concentrate on beaches. When they talk about tourism, they not just enters in beaches or water. Historical monuments and they were in a part of tourism where people then they come, then they pay money for for can see some of the historical sites then they. So I feel say government for really turn attention to like a then kind of community they are. I want the tourism for them to do some good construction, for them to improve York Village. Because time goes on, York Village is going to be expand. And tourism have the, the, the right to develop places, for them to keep their values, for us to portray the beauty of Sierra Leone, for us to tell the story out there. With places like the King's Yard, a former post guard area which had served as a spying point of royal guards who protected the royal family. The York Cemetery, one of the oldest in Sierra Leone and is believed to have held the graves of few of the colonial masters that were residing around York area. The Madinga water, which was highly secured and protected borehole water used by kings and queens to take their bath during the slave trade amongst other historical sites. The people of York have been through a lot for centuries, most importantly looking back at stories on how far they have come. But the good thing is, the people are resilient and keep going with the hope of things getting better in the future. For we mamas alone. And that's the music, baby. <laughs> For we mamas alone. love Oh, I've come 